Modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive. This is part 19. The first live steam test using a gas burner. And the first thing to do is to put some water into the side tanks. The water in the side tanks will feed the hand pump and the crosshead pump. The water in the side tanks is not routed to the injectors. The injector water needs to be cooler, so therefore it's taken from an external tank. What I have to do first is fill the boiler. So there's a compressed air line connected to the engine. The gas burner's not yet in place. I'm using compressed air to turn the engine over so that the crosshead pump will fill the boiler with water. This is much easier than using the hand pump. I may as well take this opportunity to say, please note, this is not a king scale or silver crest model locomotive. The engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China. This small plastic tank I think was originally a coolant tank for a mini lathe that I used to have. I sold the mini lathe and kept the tank. And I use this as a temporary water feed tank for injectors when I'm testing model steam locomotives. And it seems to work very well. There's one thing I forgot to do. I need to remove the stainless steel ball from the main clack valve that's fitted to the boiler. Having an extra ball valve, check valve or clack valve in the circuit would probably make it so the injectors didn't work very well. And with that little job out of the way, I can speed up the engine to pump some water into the boiler. And as you can see, some water's arrived in the water gauge. It's always good to know that the crosshead pump will pump water into the boiler, as will the hand pump, if the injectors don't. Time now to fill the lubricator, and I'm really not sure about this. I may have to modify it, but for the moment, oh dear, I've overfilled it. But never mind, I'll just reverse the video. I was going to say, for the moment, I'm going to live with it. In this clip, I'm just testing the flow of the injector water, and it's a little bit restricted owing to the valves on the tank itself. This should be okay, but it could make the injectors just a little bit temperamental. I also need to move the piping out of the way. I just need to bend the water pipe in slightly so that the water doesn't run onto the water pipe, because when the injector's in use, the water coming out of the overflow is quite hot, and I certainly don't want the water feed to the injector to become warm in any way. The time has come to light the gas burner underneath the firebox. I've removed the ash pan, and just underneath the firebox is this small gas burner. Now this small gas burner was bought via eBay, and it came from China, and it was about, I don't know, 10 or 12 pounds, something like that. I'm very impressed with it, because in no time at all, this small burner raises the temperature in the boiler to make it too hot to touch. And now there is some steam. The first problem, there is a leak around the safety valve. I'll just try nipping it up with the spanner. Yes, that seems to have worked okay. Time now to test the water system. According to the gauge, there is only 25 pounds per square inch of steam in the boiler, which is not enough to work the injectors, but it's enough to turn the engine over. But it's throwing out quite a lot of water and oil out of the chimney. And that's probably due to the fact that this engine doesn't have cylinder drain cocks. It has one drain cock, on the steam chest and that is far too small. I'm going to modify this very shortly. I think the safety valve needs adjusting. There's far too much pressure in the boiler. And it's actually currently running at about 110 pounds per square inch, but I'm not concerned about this because the boiler was tested to 200 pounds per square inch using a hydraulic pump. And a quick adjustment with my safety valve adjusting tool makes it so that the safety valve blows off at 90 pounds per square inch, which is the pressure I intend to run this engine at. Most steam locomotives, small and large, have two safety valves, but this one only has one, but it's a really large one. And this large valve allows all the excess steam to be blown to the atmosphere, so it doesn't really need to. This is the part of the steam test that can be a bit of a worry, particularly if you don't have a hand pump or an axle driven pump or a crosshead pump like this one. And it's especially worrying if you have a cold fire raging in the firebox. But I have a small gas burner and this gas burner can be turned off instantly if the water gets too low in the water gauge. But there's no fear of that because both of these injectors work perfectly fine. You can hear that beautiful sound that the injector makes when it's working. It's a bit like the sound of a little bird. There's always a problem with new boilers. Inside the new boiler there are usually impurities from the silver soldering process and the boiler primes. And what's priming? Well, when the water gets high in the water gauge and you open a valve or the safety valve, the water rushes out as well as the steam. 
And what's making it worse on this engine is the oil is rushing out as well. I think this displacement lubricator is going to need some kind of regulation because it looks like it's over oiling. I have a plan for that, I already have the parts. So more about that in a future episode. The engine really is priming badly, but as the water level in the gauge glass drops a little bit, it doesn't prime too badly. I'll be test running this boiler about three or four times before I pass it as fit for service. And I'll be doing this outside, so I'll be able to blow down the boiler. Inside on my bench, blowing down the boiler in the workshop and filling the workshop with very wet steam is not a good idea. To be honest, it's not a good idea doing this, but I thought I'd do it on the bench so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And the water and oil residue wipes off the engine quite easily. It's a bit more difficult to get it off the ceiling, though. The injector started to malfunction, and then I realised that the water tank supplying the injector was empty. And while I remember to mention this, I also tested the injector at the other side, and that works fine too, but I couldn't show it on camera because it's right at the back of the engine at the other side. Well, the engine continues to prime, not quite as bad as it did originally, and as I said earlier, it's a combination of having useless drain cocks or non-existent drain cocks to clear the cylinders. And as it's a brand new boiler, it will take a while before it settles down. If it doesn't settle down, I'm going to have to look at where the regulator is taking the steam from. As the engine has a steam dome, a large steam dome in the centre of the boiler, this is where the steam would normally be taken from, but it doesn't necessarily follow that that's the way it's been done, because some of the things on this engine were quite different from what I would have initially expected. But it's not all bad news. As you can see, the engine runs very well indeed. It's really smooth, very responsive to the regulator, and I would think that on the track it will perform quite well, provided that it's not doing this, because I would have to drive it wearing an all-over rubber suit, which would not go down too well at a model locomotive society, particularly one in a public park. I'll see what happens in the next steam test, the next steam test, of course, is going to be the coal-fired steam test, which will be more interesting and a lot dirtier, because not only will I get water and oil out of the chimney, there will be soot and ash as well. Oh joy! For its size, this little gas burner is quite amazing. You can see the gas tank on the right-hand side of the picture. The gas tank was starting to chill and the pressure dropped. So I sat the gas tank in a small plastic box, as you can see here, and then periodically I tip the other small plastic box that was taking the injector overflow water into the bigger plastic box that the can was sat in. This stopped the gas tank from chilling. It didn't make it hot, it just stopped it from freezing, and the gas pressure stayed constant. For health and safety reasons, though, I cannot recommend doing this. As you can hear, the safety valve is blowing off, so the gas burner's doing its stuff. I'm refilling the water tanks because I've been testing the crosshead pump and I've purposely filled the water tank right to the top, in fact, overfilled it. And now when I open the regulator, I can see just how quickly the water level drops. Unfortunately though, not all of this water is going into the boiler because the water pump drips all the time, which is not a massive problem. When there's water dripping out of the water pump, at least it's lubricating the ramp. That's my excuse anyway. The real reason is it's extremely difficult to get to the gland nut. I will have to make a special spanner to adjust this. So why do we need injectors? We have a hand pump that I don't really want to touch when I'm running the engine, and a crosshead pump, but this is the reason. With the bypass fully screwed down so that all the water is going via the crosshead pump into the boiler, as you can hear, the note of the engine has changed because the engine is working hard to pump water into the boiler. And the higher the boiler pressure, the harder the pump works. You can hear in this clip that the beats are slightly uneven now. Watch and listen in this clip as I open the bypass valve to let the water back to the tank. It is very important when running a steam locomotive, however big or small it is, to keep your eye on the water level. This is a little bit on the low side, but OK. If the water disappears below the bottom nut, then the firebox crown is uncovered, and that is a major problem. On this engine, the water gauge is a bit small. There isn't much range between full and empty. The injector's making that nice sound again as it pumps water into the boiler. 
and the injector really does pump a good amount of water into the boiler. You can see how quickly the level of the water goes up in the gauge glass. Here's a close-up of the injector water valve operation. If the injector drips slightly, then it's still injecting, but not as well as when the overflow goes completely dry and it makes that twittering sound. And the general principle is to open the water valve first, let the water flow to cool the injector, then open the steam valve quite wide a few turns, and then back off the water valve slightly, but if you do it too much, this will happen. And once steam blows out of the overflow, you have to start again. I'm not impressed with this whistle valve, it's very leaky. They have got worse over the years, but it's because the pipe to the whistle is very, very small. It's an eighth of an inch diameter pipe. I think what I'm going to do is put an O-ring in and around the push rod inside the valve that operates it. I'll make a video about that because they always leak, they've always leaked for years, this is the way they've been and they've never been altered. I have exactly the same type of whistle valve fitted to my 7 quarter inch gauge Titch locomotive that I very rarely these days run around the garden and that leaks as well. I have a simple idea for a modification to this valve and when I do it I will make a video about it and show the results. When I run the engine fast this time, initially it doesn't prime, so something's happening, it's probably getting a little better. Oh dear, I spoke too soon, it's priming again, and I'm getting covered in oil and water. But never mind, it makes my hair look nice and shiny, well, what's left of my hair. When we were having dinner the other day, Charlotte, my daughter, was staring at my head, and I said, what's wrong with you? She said, well, what are those brown spots on your head? I said, oh, it's probably a disease. But no, it was bits of steam oil that come out of chimneys of steam locomotives, so I have to wash my head frequently. I would say wash my hair, but there's not much of it left. There's a lot at the back, but on the top, I'm fairly bald. I've always worn my hair very long, and when I was younger, it was very long indeed. And as I got older, I tied it back in a ponytail. And it's not a fashion statement, because if I have my hair short, I've got sort of Albert Einstein hair. It sticks out in all directions. And I'm not too keen on the mad professor look. So the engine's still priming. I'll keep my eye on this, and if it continues, I will look further. Here's hoping that there is a vertical pipe that goes up inside the dome, although the dome fitting inside there is quite small, so I'm not living in hopes on this one. Either way, it's fixable, and it's not a massive issue, and I do like messing about with steam engines, as you may have noticed. There's not a lot more I can say about this steam test. I think I've covered just about everything that I want to cover on it. So what I'm going to do, just by way of a change, is leave the video running for quite a long while so you can just watch the sequence of events. And while that's happening, I will go in the house and run my head under the tap. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.